For a long time, Western countries counted African resources as an extension of their wealth on the continent. It's almost like these things did not belong to Africa. They belonged to the Western. Africans were just custodians, you know. When they want it, they come, they get it from us for free or for cheap prices or in exchange for guns, you know, to continue creating instability on the continent so they can keep benefiting at a very low price that they have to pay for it. But African leaders are beginning to wake up and say, we live in a world where the new world order dictates that African resources belong to Africans and they must benefit people of African descent. If you want our resources, you will pay and you will pay the right price so we can develop just the way you're using our resources to develop your country. For not only is there strength in our numbers because the nations gathered here represent close to half of the human population. But there is also abundance in our resources. For the nations gathered here are the custodians of the bulk of the natural resources the world needs for the creation of the digital and green economies of tomorrow. The place to start it is for us to confront the barriers that have denied us a stake in global prosperity in the past. Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of our conversations. My name is Indira Ganga. I am a business journalist by profession and a digital content creator. There's nothing I love more than coming on here and having conversations with you guys about black people, Africans, our empowerment and how we can rise up and take our rightful place at the global stage. Connect with me on social media. I'd like to talk to you. I'd like to know you. I'd like to connect with you at Ondero Oganga on Twitter, on Facebook and on Instagram. And you can come over to my channel at Ondero Oganga where I share diaspora stories of people relocating from all over the world back to the African continent because they recognize how important it is to reconnect with the motherland. Africa hosted the BRICS summit and this was the most controversial summit in the history of all summits held in the world because the West painted it in very negative light. If you watched um, news about BRICS uh, leading up to BRICS and even during BRICS, it got very negative PR from Western media. Get from African media, it got very good PR and I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why in a few. Because African leaders are not playing anymore. African leaders have begin, begun to understand their worth. African leaders have begun to understand or are beginning to understand that bowing to Western masters will only make you a slave for the rest of your life. So speak now or forever hold your breath. We've been holding our breath for 70 years since we got independence. We've been holding our breath and African leaders are like, we're suffocating. We're suffocating. It doesn't benefit you because when you hold your breath, they oppress you. When you speak, they will still oppress you. You might as well speak. You know, you know, stand your ground, even if it makes your knees weak, you know, irrespective of the consequences that come with it. If you're the African leader who has to pay the price for speaking up so that the rest of the people can live in a better Africa, then so be it. One of those people is the president of Malawi and um, Lazarus Chakwera, and he was speaking very with a lot of conviction, particularly when it comes to global representation. The UN Security Council, it's been years and years and years of Africans calling for representation on that council, yet all they get is observatory roles. What is there to observe, yet Africans are the people who are currently struggling with global instability. You know, there's so much civil unrest on the continent and Africans need a seat at that table because security matters. The security of the continent matters. And also most of the instability in Africa is sponsored by the West. You know, Africans, we don't make our guns here. Most of those guns, most of those missiles, most of those drones, they don't come from here. There are people who are selling weapons to the continent in exchange for gold, in exchange for oil, in exchange for diamond. And that's why Africans need a seat at that table so that we can call out some of these things. So the security and the safety of the continent is represented by an African who understands the situation of the continent. And the president of Malawi was saying, the time is now to give us. A second barrier we must confront is the monopoly that some countries enjoy of multilateral institutions like the UN Security Council, where we must insist that it is no longer acceptable for a handful of countries that claim to love democracy and equality 
to have the power to undemocratically make decisions about us without us. Five months ago, as outgoing chairperson of the least developed countries, LDCs, I presided over the launch of the Doha Program of Action for LDCs for 2022 to 2031 in Doha, Qatar, under the auspices of the United Nations. And yet none of the 46 nations that are part of this program have a permanent representation on the UN Security Council, where decisions are made affecting its progress. This is an exception. The thing that he spoke about that was very key and very instrumental was the place of African resources and the value that it should have for Africans. You know, during COVID-19, when the whole world stopped, the place that suffered the most was Africa. And I'll tell you why. We can have divergent views about COVID-19 vaccine, COVID-19 testing, COVID-19 treatment, fair enough. But Africa did not have the resources. You know, having the resources and choosing not to use them, having vaccines and saying, I will not take it is one thing. But not having access to the vaccine is another thing. Not having access to um, the right drugs to treat the virus is another thing. You understand? And so this was a wake up call for many African leaders who were like, why are we so powerless? so helpless in this situation and it made them realize that being friends with the west doesn't count for nothing because when push comes to shove the west will always choose themselves over and over and over again that's why they were holding the vaccine because they contributed the most money to go into the research that is why they will not release the patent because their pharmaceuticals have to make money at the expense of people dying at the expense of trade forget even health business because there was a time you couldn't travel if you weren't vaccinated you understand at the expense of the financial well-being just to get tested for COVID-19 was so expensive and African leaders are beginning to say hmm so you want to be my friend when you want my resources but when I need you you're not my friend so moving forward friendship aside if it's a business relationship it's business I'm not giving you my resources for free you will pay and you will pay the actual price so that I can become self-sufficient. We are, and how unresponsive to our needs the global financial system and multilateral institutions are, what remains is for us to do something about it. And we are more than capable of doing something about it, for not only is there strength in our numbers, because the nations gathered here represent close to half of the human population. But there is also abundance in our resources. For the nations gathered here are the custodians of the bulk of the natural resources the world needs for the creation of the digital and green economies of tomorrow. The place to start it is for us to confront the barriers that have denied us a stake in global prosperity in the past. One such barrier is our own failure to build our own institutional and financial systems, systems that can better facilitate the implementation of instruments like the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCTA, and the aspirations of platforms like the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC, the Russia-Africa Summit, and the India-Africa Forum Summit, IAFS. Is there anything to add, really? Is there anything to add? He summed it up very beautifully, and it just warms my heart to see African leaders beginning to speak up, to speak up for themselves, to speak up for their people, and to stand up against the West, because the time is now. Thank you very much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, comment down below what you think about um, the speech by the Malawian president, Lazarus Chakwera. And, you know, connect with me on social media. I'd love to get to know you, talk to you, share with you my content. At Ondiro Ganga is the handle on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can also come over to my YouTube channel, At Ondiro Ganga, where I document original and authentic diaspora stories of people who are relocating 
from everywhere in the world and coming back to the motherland to reconnect with their African roots. I'll see you again next time.